Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle about a square, a semicircle, and an equilateral triangle with side length one. And we're going to be finding the side length of the square. So what I'd like to do is first start off by finding the radius of the semicircle, which is kind of green, and then using that information to find the side length of the square. Are we going to be using the Pythagorean theorem? Okay, you can go ahead and watch and see. All right, let's get started now. And before I get started, I'd like to tell you one thing that please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so and also the like button, that means a lot to me. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. Now, what am I supposed to do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and find the radius of the semicircle first, right, as I mentioned before. So let me go ahead and make a good connection here. You know that good connections are very important for finding length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make that connection here from the center of the semicircle to the equilateral triangle, I'm gonna drop a perpendicular and that's gonna be the point of tangency, as you know, right? Okay, so what am I supposed to find here? Well, the radius of the semicircle. Let's call that R, okay? So that's gonna be the radius. And this is also R, but I don't really care about that little piece here because what I'd like to do is find the radius, but how am I gonna find the radius? Well, one thing we do know here, and that's the only thing we know, is the side length for the triangle, right? And the side length for the, and it's equilateral, so all sides are congruent. We know that the side length for the triangle is one. So if you cut that in half from symmetry, obviously, the center here is gonna be sit in the middle, right? So this length is going to be one half, correct? So symmetry means a lot, actually. When you use it appropriately, you're gonna be finding a lot of great things. Awesome. So now we have, we do have that symmetry here. So, what is that supposed to mean though in terms of R, right? So we're trying to find the radius of the semicircle first. So how am I supposed to do that? Well, I'm going to use that information in a special triangle and this is a very special triangle. Why? Because this is 60 degrees, as you know, and that comes from the fact that this is an equilateral triangle. Isn't that beautiful? And this makes it 30 degrees. Okay, awesome. Now. How am I gonna go from here? Well, we do have a very special property in a 36 to 90 triangle, which comes from Pythagorean theorem. Obviously, you can say, hey, it's trigonometry, 36 to 90, whatever, cut equilateral in half. Doesn't matter how you put it, it comes from Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so using the Pythagorean theorem, we can safely say that if the longer leg of this triangle is one half and the shorter leg is just gonna be that number divided by root three, because what do we know? We know that in a 30-60-90 triangle, the longer leg is root three times the shorter leg. Awesome. Okay, what else do we know? Well, we also do know that the shorter leg is half the hypotenuse. So I can also go off of that, but I'd like to use the longer leg because the longer leg in this case is the radius of the semicircle. Does that make sense? Awesome, hopefully it does. Okay, so what, what that's supposed to mean is I can actually find this length right here uh, by using the uh, fact that uh, the shorter leg is going to be the longer leg divided by root 3. Awesome. And if you rationalize the denominator, that's going to be r times root 3 over 3, which is this one, right? Okay, awesome. Well, what else do we know? Well, we do know that uh, if you double the shorter leg, you're going to get the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and do that next, and then we'll go from there. So, if you double the shorter leg, which you should be getting 2r root 3 over 3, that should equal the hypotenuse, which is 1 half. Right? Beautiful. Hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg. Let's not forget that. Okay, let's do some cross multiplication here. We get 4r root 3 is equal to 3. And then we can just go ahead and divide both sides by 4 times the square root of 3. And that should give us r equals... 3 divided by 4 times the square root of 3. Beautiful. What am I going to do next? Well, we're just going to go ahead and multiply numerator and denominator by root 3 to rationalize the denominator. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. So, we'll multiply by root 3 and root 3 
that's going to give me 3 times root 3 divided by 4 times this times this equals 3. So it's a 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. Awesome. But guess what? We can simplify this. 3 goes into 12 4 times. Therefore, the radius of the semicircle is square root of 3 over 4. All right. So remember at the beginning of the video, I said that we're going to find the radius of the semicircle first. And we did. Now, why do we need to do that first? Because now we can use that information to complete the process. Okay, so now I know R. Let's go ahead and find the side length for the square. So I'll be making another connection here, obviously, right? That should be somewhat obvious, like this. All right, and then that should give me a lot of good things. Like what? Okay. I don't know the side length of the square. So since I don't know it, I can call it anything I want, right? So let's call that X. Maybe change colors here. Let's call this X. Okay. What do we know? Well, this piece from this point to that point is R. And as you know, R is equal to square root of 3 over 4. So this length is equal to square root of 3 over 4. Beautiful. What about between this point and that point? Well, that should be the side length of the square, which is X. And then how about this one, right? This might be a little surprising for you, but guess what? This is a midpoint for the equilateral that formed right here. Look, that's also equilateral. Or some people say equilateral, but I like to say equilateral. Anyways, that's another story. The whole thing is x. So this is the side length of the square, but we're just taking half of it, right? So this should be x over 2. Beautiful. But isn't this another 30, 60, 90 triangle? Absolutely. So... The shorter leg is x over 2, the longer leg here, which is kind of like the height of this triangle, is going to be root 3 times that, which is x over 2 times root 3. Beautiful. Now, what did we find by doing this? Well, first we found the radius of the semicircle by using a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and then we used that information and then included the side length of the square as x, and then we found the height of this equilateral triangle that sits on top of the square and we also found that in terms of x therefore now we do have a good thing what is that thing well from this point if you go ahead and connect this point to that point now that's going to be the height of the equilateral triangle the which one the big one right the giant equilateral triangle which is supposed to be uh, in red but it kind of looks brown i don't know what you guys think about it but it's supposed to be a red color okay anyways it's not a very bright color unfortunately and i actually wrote a tweet about this to desmos.com can you please bring some brighter colors like GeoGebra? anyways that's another story let's get back to our story so in our story we have the whole height in terms of x so let's go ahead and add, a, add it up and then it is just gonna add up. Okay, let's see what happens. So now I, I'm gonna start with the top one. So x over two plus x over two times root three. That's my first piece. And then what comes next? X, this piece here, plus x, plus the bottom piece is the radius, which is square root of three over four. Square root of three over four. And the whole thing should equal what? It should equal the height of the large equilateral triangle. But what is that? Well, again, we can take advantage of 30, 60, 90 triangles. Here, let me show you what that looks like. So if you go ahead and consider this giantish, half of the giant, this 30, 60, 90 triangle, you know the base of it, which is also the shorter leg, right? Because this is 30 degrees. As you know, this is also 30 degrees, awesome. So, if I know the shorter leg, can I find the longer leg, which is the height? Absolutely. How? Multiply one half by root three. So, that's going to give you square root of three over two. That's it. Simple, right? You add a bunch of things and then it just adds up and you get the height of the equilateral triangle, which is the big one. Okay? Shorter leg times square root of three equals longer leg. There you go. Okay. Let's continue. What am I going to do next? Do basic math, very easy, no more quadratics, no more Pythagorean, just basic math. Okay, cool. 
So we could consider this a easy-ish puzzle maybe, right? On the easy side. So let's see what happens. Uh, I can take out an x here. So that should give me square root of three over two plus one. And then I can take out the square root of three over four from the square root of, uh, square root of three over two. So in other words, this is what I'm trying to say, right? But square root of three over four is just half of square root of three over two. Therefore, if you subtract a half of a number from a number, you end up with the half of the number, which is the same thing that you subtracted, whatever. So that's what you get, right? Okay, so let's arrange this a little bit. Maybe I can just write it as with the common denominator, two plus root three over two equals square root of three over four. So what am I supposed to do next? Cross multiply, cross cancel, simplify, so on and so forth. Let's do it. Well, I can just go ahead and multiply like this. Uh, it's gonna look like two times the square root of three multiply by, I mean divided by, you know what I'm talking about, four times two plus root three. Here we go. So this guy is gonna be multiplied by this guy and this guy is gonna be multiplied by this guy, okay? So now two and four can be canceled out. We could have done that earlier too, but no, no big deal. Now, I'd like to rationalize the denominator obviously here. So let me go ahead and do that. Multiply by two minus root three over two minus root three. As you know, two minus root three is a positive quantity because two is greater than root three. So I'd like to keep things positive. It's more fun that way. Now, when you multiply this guy by that guy, you're going to be getting what? Four minus three which is one, awesome. So we don't have to worry about it. Well, what do we have on top? We have x equals square root of three times two minus square root of three divided by two times one, which is equal to two, by the way. And I can just go ahead and distribute the square root of three, and that should give me two times the square root of three minus three over two for the side length of the square, which sits on top of this semicircle, all right? That's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Again, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be safe, take care, bye-bye.